o'clock, Ray.
praise God. Yes. 
and <laughs> apart from spending all day with my wife, had a beautiful day and what have you, uh, there's no other place to spend with, uh, apart from with my wife, spend it here with my brothers and sisters worshiping the Lord.
amazing grace. Oh, yes. If we don't have the ability to even understand the right. glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to have Bruce and Tammy come and sing for us in just a moment. But before we do, we want to make the announcements. Let's remember the revival that is coming up. And already begin to invite your friends to be here. I believe that it, in my heart it will be the greatest revival that we've had since I have been part of this ministry. So pray about it and do your best to be faithful to that. I also was reading for Kathy. I believe it's about it talked for just a little while before coming to church. That the Lord will continue the healing process and bless her. And I believe that we have a couple of announcements for the ladies. Oh yeah. Okay. Thank you, Keith. Uh, I just have a couple announcements for the ladies. Uh, let's see, the first thing. Uh, we want to do, I know there's a card being passed around right now for uh, Kimsey's anniversary is next Saturday. So next Sunday, we're going to have a little party for him. After the service, we're going to have cake, probably cake and ice cream. We're uh, taking monetary gifts if you want to either... Chris or myself will take the money. We'll put it all together in this card. Also, this month is Pastor Appreciation Month. And since we're doing something for the anniversary, we thought no more money unless you really want to do it. But give them a card and with a note how much you do appreciate them. And we've got a basket back in the foyer that you can just put all the cards in there and then we'll give it to them on the last Sunday of this month. So just to show our appreciation to them. Also, Chris has got a bunch of plastic containers back there that belong to somebody, whoever they belong to. Would you please pick them up, take them home with you? And Chris says, if you don't take them, we're going to put them in the kitchen. <laughs> and I, yeah, I think that's all I've got that I can remember. We did have a really good time yesterday. We pa yes. packed a bunch of bags for the homeless people, and most of the gals took some with them, so I don't know if there's many left. So we probably will be, maybe do a continuous type thing. If you find things in the store, even dollar stores are good places to pick up stuff, and bring them to the church, and we'll just gather them all together, and once we get a bunch, we'll do some more, make up some more bags. So it's a real blessing that you can give these out to people, and uh, and they all have tracks in them, and. Uh, we have a list in the back of items that they really need to put in those bags. So I think that's all I have to say. All right, thank you. Good job. We're going to ask if Tammy and Bruce will come now and sing for us. The Lord bless them. Is it on? Oh, it's on. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Oh. We were kind of in a quandary as to uh, um, which song. So, huh? <laughs> Sister Margie came and looked over my shoulder to see what the other one was that I was uh, considering, and she goes, Oh, I love that song. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what? God is so good. Amen? And his word says that wherever two or three are gathered in his name, 
Well, when Clint, I believe you're going to sing for us. Get yourself up here. I've got to talk to you for a moment. <laughs> you know that when Harding fell. She's precious to me. I love her. And I said, I'm not going to leave. Little did I know it was going to be almost two weeks. And I know now, looking back, that there's no way that I could have. I tried. I was up 33 hours one time and almost 44 another. But I had to have some help. And, I, and these are my brothers and sisters. They would have been there in a heartbeat had I called them. But That's right. she's precious to me. And I had to have somebody that I knew that had a love for her. And I knew the family did. And you and Marvell came in. Sent up for hours and relieved me, and I don't know how to thank you. Praise I thank everybody for the prayers, but I thank you. Love you, man. Thank you. 
and all each one that is here, I pray, and I'll thank you in thy lovely name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 You know, when we come together in a church service like we are right now, and I've been at this a while, and I can really compare it. Every church service that I've ever been in, there hasn't been too many mediocre services. <laughs> it's either been a service that is likened unto a funeral, really, where you come and you talk about things in the past, and you greet each other and you say, hang in there. <laughs> And then we dismiss, or it'll be a service of resurrection. Blessing, where our faith is resurrected, where our hope is resurrected, where, where our spirit is resurrected, where our courage is resurrected, where our vows that we've made in the past is resurrected, and where there's something that changes within us to say, we're not about to quit in this journey. Yes. We're going to press on. We're getting yes. closer to victory. And, and, and my faith is at a higher time than it yes. ever has. Because Jesus was in the house and he touched him. Hallelujah. And whatever kind of the service it is, always depends on if the Holy Spirit or if the Master really in a powerful way shows up. Bless the Lord. And I've seen services that have started out well just kind of dead and, uh -huh. and then someone like Tammy comes and sings a song. Uh -huh. And somebody someplace in the congregation says, You mean he's really here right now? Hallelujah. She said, but there's two or three well, there's more than two or three. That's right. And it and he's really here to mend my heart. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't like exactly the way that I'm going. You mean, you mean he's here to turn my life? Yes. And somebody raises their hands and they begin to thank the King of Kings for what he's done in their life. Yes. Hallelujah. And the Master shows up. I love you. Suddenly that service becomes alive and though I've been in this a long time I can't describe it nor do I have to because you are aware of the atmosphere changing amen. in the service like it did a few moments ago. Yes, amen. When the Holy Spirit comes in you can feel it, you can sense it, you're aware and the church becomes alive amen. with His presence. Thank you. Then I've been in services also where uh, and I even reluctant to talk about it where I could feel the presence of God there and for some reason instead of following the leading of the Holy Spirit in that service we decided that we was going to have to follow a program that we had made. Come on now. I set up till midnight finding 27 points and I'm only to the 10th one and I feel the Holy Spirit, and I know that if I make an altar call, people is going to be coming to bless your heart. I stayed up till 1 o'clock in the morning or 12 o'clock at these 27 points, and you're going to hear them if you have to stay till 10 o'clock. And by the time the service is over, it's just dead and boring as can be. Bless the Lord. I preached at a service sometime back, maybe two or three months ago. I know that Mary Taylor was there, and of course, my wife was there. I believe these people were there. And I'm preaching and I can feel the anointing. And great things begin to happen. And, and when it was over with, this person came up and testified. They wanted it in confidence, but I mean the Lord had changed their lives. And I'm thinking, devil, you take that. <laughs> Boy, my spirit is getting higher and I I feel alive and I know the church is alive and somebody else came up and they and they told me what God had done for them and then I prayed for a person and they told me that immediately they was healed. How and I felt it? like a walking giant. Uh -huh. And then and then this lady came up to me and 
Adam Jesus. You gotta be careful. I, 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 you, you never want to criticize people's looks, and I don't want to, but Bless him. nature had to have been the kindest to her, and I and, 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 and she came up and boy, I tell you what, I I, I had the anointing and and I'm ready to rebuke any devil that she has. And she told me, she said, my husband passed away about six months ago. And I thought she was grieving. And when I pray, you know that I pray out loud. Not that God is deaf and he can't hear me, but I want you to hear me. So that in case it resonates with you, that you, that, that you will pray with me and you'll join with me. And, and, and so... I got ready to say, God, that... <coughs> and she said, yeah, my husband passed away, but she says, the, the, the problem is, is, uh, <coughs> she says, I don't have a husband now, and <laughs> Clevin's going to kill me. <laughs> she says, but I still have those feelings. And now I'm all confused. I don't know if she wants me to pray that the Lord will raise her husband up. Now he's been dead and gone for six months. And I don't have that kind of faith. <laughs> It's, it, it, it's a long shot. Or if she wants me to pray that God's going to give her a new husband, it's also a long shot. <laughs> or if she wants me to pray about whatever she referred to those feelings. Bless the Lord. But when I prayed, I didn't pray very loud. You know. And, and, and I really didn't know what to pray and I didn't want the people to hear me to pray whether it was for a new man this one to come out or, or and, and, and so it was kind of like this well all that anointing that I had I, I kind of it didn't seem to be there and I just Lord you heard you know all about it him Right. And I took off and I ran over to where Claudine and Mary Kay was at. And I got behind Claudine. And yeah, when you're in trouble, Jesus goes in front of you. Now Jesus was in front of me and then Claudine and me. I was back far away. And I told them what had just happened. And they laughed. I, I, I thought maybe they, they would help me pray, but I, all of a sudden, all I wanted was out of the building <laughs> and gone. It was kind of dead after that for me. And then I can remember also attending a funeral and well there's so many people when you get to my age it seems like the phone is ringing all the time but this was some time back and this was a good Christian man and when you attend the funeral of a Christian and you know what I know and I know what Jesus said you know that Jesus has destroyed death. That Jesus doesn't want to hang around death. That Jesus doesn't like death. Uh -huh. In fact, in the Old Testament, you wasn't even supposed to touch somebody that was dead. That's right. Jesus came to destroy death. He doesn't want you dead. He doesn't want a dead church. Come on now. Amen. And so now, when there's somebody that died in the faith, I, I sure there's a little bitter. You talk about mixed emotions. I don't have the 
the, the, the psychology to describe what I feel, but I'm thinking, oh, brother, you, you made it. I, I'm about half jealous. I, I know what you're doing right now. You, you're not, there's no tears, there's no pain, there's no sorrow. You're rejoicing with yes. the Master. It, it never get dark where you're at. Oh, you made it. Yes, amen. Yet there is the sorrow that you feel with. For the, for the family and the mm -hmm. friends. And so such was my feelings as I was standing looking in the casket. And then a lady came up and she said, oh, he looks so natural. <laughs> I'm thinking, you don't have any idea what he looks like. <laughs> You don't know what we'll be like, what we're going to be like him. We're going to see him as he is. He's having a good time. Yes. And then her boy about this big came up and says, Mom, well, I'd recognize him anywhere. <laughs> he said, if he came walking down the street, I would recognize him. Yeah. What is it saying that We've heard so many times out of the mouth of babes come some real stupid things sometimes. <laughs> of course you recognize it. Service started and we sat down and boy, I'll tell you what, preachers are going to answer for how they've changed the messages they preach and the things that they say. Well, I've been to a lot of services lately where everybody gets to heaven one way or another. Help them, Jesus. Claudine and I have sat and looked at each other. I mean, now the popular theology is we all get to heaven one way or another. Yeah. But the Bible says straight is the way. And, right. and, and when Ananias went to pray for Paul, he had to go down Straight Street. See, there, it was the only straight street that there was in that town. The rest of them was all little roads and paths that went around through the hill, but you had to go down Straight Street. And I'm sitting there listening to the preacher preach, and he's taking us through the hills on one of them winding roads, how this brother's getting to heaven. And I thought, I wish that you knew him like I did, that you just simply say one day he fell at the Master's feet and repented of his sins, and Jesus washed his sins away, and his name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and he took one breath there, and he took one over there, and blow. Hallelujah. Oh, we're going through. And I got bored. <laughs> and I couldn't concentrate no more. He lost me up in the mountain someplace <laughs> along the winding roads. But I did get to thinking about what that young man said. I don't know why that he said that. So I'm thinking, yeah, you'd recognize, of course you'd recognize it if he came walking down the street. And I thought, what if he would come walking down the street? Mm -hmm. Why did that kid say that? And I thought, wouldn't that be something if he'd come in now and he sat by me? I guarantee I wouldn't be bored. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fella, how do you think this is going? <laughs> we, we put a lot, of, a lot of time in this. You like your flowers? And, <laughs> and I'm lost in that funeral. But my mind started thinking if Jesus was here, he would go and no, he wouldn't. He's already done. This was a child of his and the Lord called him home to be with him at that very moment. He couldn't be happier than he was at that moment because Jesus had destroyed him. Yes. Jesus doesn't like death. And he doesn't like 
a dead church. Amen. He doesn't like when a person who was one time on fire for God, who one time was easily moved to tears when the anointing came, who one time sang a song not because they knew the words, but because the words meant something to them. Right? Mm -hmm. And they were alive, but suddenly things begin to change. And not only did we grow old in body, which is natural, but we begin to grow old in the spirit, which is unnatural. Lord Jesus. For the closer we get to the day that we behold the Master, we ought to be more alive spiritually for Him than we ever have been Amen. before in all of our lives. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you a little bit just to show you the Master's opinion and how He hates death. And Mark the Fifth chapter. The 35th and the 42nd to the 42nd verse. And it says, And when he had spoke, there came the rulers of the synagogue's house, certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why trouble is thy the master and his father? As soon as Jesus heard the word, that was spoken, he said that the ruler of the synagogue be not afraid, only believe. Uh -huh. And he first suffered no man to follow him, saith Peter, James, and John, a brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the turmoil, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And you can read the same scripture in Matthew 9.23. Only there it says that they was playing music and that there was weeping. Mm -hmm. And Jesus came. See, you've got to get this story. This was a rich ruler. And back in those days, if you was rich and, and, and someone died, there wasn't a whole lot of sin. But if one of your friends passed away, you didn't want just a few rich cronies to show up. And so you hired professional weepers. There was those that could blink an eye and start crying. And, and, and there was those that could howl that would make a coyote scene. <laughs> and the more money you had, the better choir criers and howlers you could get. <laughs> and then you also brought in the musicians to play the songs. Now, the Bible says that it was music. But if you read on when Jesus got there, he called it noise. <laughs> <laughs> and the scripture that I just was reading to you when, when Jesus got there and saw all the women, we, what do you call it in, 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 in this? It says, uh, and he cometh in the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seeth the turmoil. That's what he called it. And then the wept and way over great. And when he came in, he saith unto them, Why make you this ado? Called it ado, he called it noise. Because he knew that it was professionalism. Let me tell you. Jesus knows the difference. Right? When he comes in the house. Yes. 
if you're playing musical instruments and singing songs that touch your heart, or if it's just a bunch of noise. Come on. And see, when it's a dead church and the anointing never shows up and the Holy Ghost isn't present, and we've conformed to satisfy what the world expects of us, that's about all we can do is just wail. Yeah, bless them, Lord. Amen. And have music that is no more than a noise to him. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Because there's a funeral going on and Jesus isn't in the house. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is a, he, he was invited in and he came in and he said, don't worry. You know, she, she's all right, and, and she's just asleep. And the people begin to mock. Uh -huh. The days of miracles is over. What are you talking about? You people have gone off the deep end. Do you realize how you sound that you're serving kind of a Jesus that can still open blind eyes, that can cause the lame to walk, that can cause the sorrowful to shout with joy again? What, 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 kind of a, what, what, what kind of a deal is this? And Jesus isn't in the house, so we just rave on with music more worried about if we hit every note just oh. right, if we hit every syllable just right, how good our talent is. But Jesus isn't in the house. Amen. Come on, yeah. Preach it. Amen. But when Jesus comes, uh -huh. death has to leave. Yes. <laughs> See, there's no dead church in Jesus in the church at the same time. The church is dead for one reason and that's because Jesus isn't in the house. But when Jesus is in the uh, house, the church isn't dead yes. anymore. You're not dead anymore. There's movement. Something is alive. Yes. Things is happening because Jesus is in the house. Yes. Yes. What about poor people? I, 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 I've got the scripture. I don't have time. I'm, I, I, but, but one time... Jesus is going along and he looks off and, and, and this is a widow lady and, and her son had passed away. And Jesus just sees them carrying him off to be buried and Jesus has compassion and he stops the funeral. Mm -hmm. The Bible says he grabbed the pallbearers. Yeah. And made him stop. Couldn't afford the music, couldn't afford the singers, couldn't afford the wailers, couldn't afford the howlers, couldn't afford uh, just poor lady, just some ball bearers going on. Talking about this one time and somebody asked me, said, you know what they call ball bearers in Oklahoma? And I says, what? He says, karaoke. <laughs> But there they go, carrying along, and Jesus stops them. And he tells this boy to read, and this boy stands up and begins to talk. See? You can't have a good funeral if you invite Jesus, he'll mess it up. If you've got a lot of money and in, in investments in one, don't ask Jesus to come because he's going to mess it up. <laughs> if you've got a church that you appeal to the community and you've got the big wigs of the community coming and you're really sponsored and you're really growing and things is really happening and you've got all plans, don't ask Jesus to come to that dead church or you'll mess it up. <laughs> He'll have you shout down the aisle and your big big people might not understand it too much. There'll be people speaking in tongues and it's liable to shock some of them because when Jesus comes into the house and it becomes alive, it changes. Yes, hallelujah. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Lazarus has died and Jesus heard about it and, and Jesus told his disciples as Lazarus that they knew that he was sick. He was probably burning with a fever. And Jesus got word. He knew that Lazarus was dying. He told his disciples, we got to go see Lazarus. He's asleep and I'm going to go wake him. And one of the disciples says, well, Jesus, 
If he's asleep, he's doing okay. Uh -huh. He was burning up with fever, and he was and he was eating, and he wasn't doing very good. But if he's resting, if he's a, 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 a asleep, he, he's doing okay. And it says down there, Jesus had to speak plainly. I like it because Jesus speaks plainly. I like it. To me, he needs to speak plainly. And he turned around and he says, Lazarus is dead. Right. God. <laughs> We've got some churches. <laughs> we got some people that think we're doing all right because we're asleep. We're comfortable, all right. We're, there's nothing tormenting us. We, we're, 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 we're sound asleep. And in and, 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 and 40 minutes, we're going to dismiss and we're going to go home and, and, and we're going to eat something and we're going to sleep some more. Bless them, Lord. And the devil says, if I can put the church to sleep to where it doesn't have a vision anymore, where it, it, it's not fired up anymore, I can win. Yeah, come on now. Right, amen. Bring it on now. But I'm telling you, when Jesus Christ shows up in your life and when he shows up in the church, you wipe the sleep out of your eyes oh, yes. and you get about the master's business because time is short. And because it's short, so much more will he anoint you and fill yes. you with the Holy Ghost and his presence will become oh, yeah. so much more abundant because he says, it's not time to sleep. It's not time to die. Yes. I'm making you alive. Oh, There's something that needs to be accomplished. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I to Jesus. Good Samaritan, I don't have time to read it, but when the Good Samaritan found the man that was beating and thrown in the ditch, the Bible said that he was half dead. Right? Half dead. Did you say what I said? I said half dead. I want you to look at where you were at and where the churches was at. And then I dare you to tell me that you're seeing a greater move of God now than you did back. Because we're half dead, we think. Come on. You look at some of the churches in there. <laughs> getting their last breath. <laughs> and they think they're all right. Uh-huh. Come on. But Jesus doesn't save and make half dead Christians. Amen. When he makes you alive, yes. he makes you spiritually abundantly powerful. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Alive. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Jesus hates death so much that it says in the Bible whenever he comes again, he's going to take the dead first. The dead will rise first. He doesn't want dead people. He doesn't want dead churches. He doesn't want half-dead Christians. He wants us to be alive. Yeah. Glory to God. Oh, Not going to preach much longer, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> In Luke. The seventh chapter, and it says, And it came to pass the day after he went into the city. Many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Uh -huh. And I, when they came nigh, under the gate of the city, they held it was a dead man carried out only son. This is the story of Jesus raising him up. Then right after that, look down. I mean, this just happened. And Jesus has got to say something that's in red. Uh -huh. The 22nd verse says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Go your way. Tell John what things you have seen and heard. Because this is where John and inquire from some of his followers to go see Jesus and see if he's the Messiah if they should look for another. And Jesus says, tell John these things that you have seen and heard. How that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the dead 
here. Yes. The dead is raised and the gospel is preached. Hallelujah. I'm going to close this in a little bit, but I, I, want, you to, I, I want you to get this. Bless the Lord. John, see, there was no man that was more regarded to God than John the Baptist. Says so. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that there was no one greater than John. That's what it says. Not Paul, not Moses, not Elijah, not Elijah, those miracle workers. It says no one. John the Baptist wasn't a miracle worker, but he preached. Yes, he did. And brought many spiritually from dead to life. Thank you. Ever wonder what happened? Jesus, he baptized Jesus. The, that comes from here. This is my beloved son. John, I'm not worthy. I lose his name. Now he's sitting in prison and he's saying, go find out if this is really the one or not. Or should we look? And yet, God says that there was none more honorable than him. Well, that shakes me just a little bit. What happened from Holy Dove, one coming after me, not worthy sh shoes? And he's seen this, and now he's saying, Is this the water? Should we look for it? What happened? Jesus is going to send a message to John. He says, you just go tell John that you've seen the blind that are seeing. The lame, they're walking. The lepers are getting cleansed. Yes. The dead here. The dead are raised. Hallelujah. The gospel's being preached. Yes. Yes. And John knew that it's the living son of God bringing a living message and making Because if you're dead, you're not singing, you're just making a noise, says Jesus. <laughs> I've heard talent that was so good. They had traveled to music schools not only in the United States, but the foreign countries, and they could hit every note. Yeah. And after the performance, there was a round of applause. And the people would say, isn't that great? Doesn't she have talent? Who could hit that note? Mm -hmm. And then it's over. Yes. And I've heard people wasn't allowed to sing much because they had no talent. Come on now. They have an anointing. They couldn't hit all those notes and they hadn't been to music school. Mm -hmm. But they've been to talk to Jesus yes. and when they sang, I see tears oh, yes. the cheeks of the audience. In my ministry, I see the people get up and come to the altar. Yes. And I say that music. It's making people alive. Yes, it's raising them out of their dead sins and giving them eternal life. The Holy Spirit is honoring them. It's alive. Jesus is in the house. Yes, hallelujah. Yes. Amen. You singers, I love you to death, but as you practice your soul, pray for the anointing because only Jesus, not your music, will make them alive. Right. Preachers, don't get your sermons off the internet. Get them on your knees. Sandalo, 
If you're deaf, you're probably dead. Well, I don't, Ray, I, you talk about Jesus talking to you. I, I wish he'd talk to me like that. Jesus. The Bible says the sheep know my voice. Right. He's talked to you. Don't you deny it? You'd have never came to the Lord if he hadn't talked to you. That's right. You heard his voice then. Yeah. When you sat there and you heard the message of how Christ died for you, and you he, he loves me that much. He, he died for me. He's going to he's going, he's going to turn me around. He's going to mend my broken heart. He means, he's speaking to your heart. You heard his voice. That's right. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. We get to the place to where we no longer just hear his voice but try to reason things out. We're dying. Lord Jesus. You tell John. Mm -hmm. But the dumb are talking. You don't feel what I feel. Bless them, Lord. When the church doesn't pray. Come on. When the church doesn't talk to Jesus. Mm -hmm. When the Christian doesn't spend time talking to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And they lose their voice and they become dumb. Jesus. Jesus. They die. Yes, amen. There's not a message from heaven by the Holy Spirit I get concerned. Amen. When I don't hear from heaven, I get concerned. If I feel I've not talked to the Master in a while, I'm not falling into that trap. I'll go find some place in a bedroom by myself and I'll talk to the Master. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Tell John the lepers. Is getting cleansed. Leprosy is a type of sin in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That had to thrill that evangelist's heart. <laughs> Maybe this is a good time. This is one of my last messages. Maybe you don't want to hear it, but I'll tell you what, I'm tired. Of this raise your hand and repeat after me. Come on. Amen. Five hundred people were saved in that service, and there's never a change. Amen. That's right. And what they carried in, they carried out. Uh huh. Yes. The Lord knows my heart, or I wouldn't be saying this. I'm not being critical. But when Jesus comes, oh yes, He changes. Yes, He does. Amen. 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 He washes those sins away. Hallelujah. They're completely gone. Yes, they are. Praise God. That level C that was going to kill you is now gone. And you're going to live forever because yes. it puts life in your heart. And it's not when you repeat after me. But it's when you get down and you talk to him. Yes, and you say, yes. I'm nothing. Yes. But I came to the end of my road. And I know that you are the son of God. Forgive me. My sins, I know you died and you rose again. I want to turn around my life. I yes. want to walk with you. I want to talk with you. I want to sing about you. Oh, Make yes. me alive. Oh, then okay. that's when it happens. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's not that people doesn't care about Jesus anymore. It's that people's not hearing about Jesus uh -huh. like they once did. Come on. Sure. 